Hello and welcome to another episode in our van build series. As you can see we have now got walls so if you want to see how we made these and how we got them up then please stick around and we'll be showing you exactly what we did. We decided to go for ply on our walls rather than tongue and groove cladding because we really liked how simple it looks and we thought it would be a lot quicker and easier to do than the tongue and groove cladding which we have on our ceiling and we just liked the contrast between having the different textures. Before we begin talking about putting ply on the walls we just need to backtrack slightly because when we were putting the insulation down this is when we laid our batten across in order to attach the ply to. We attached the batten horizontally through the van. The reason we did this is so that we would have a really sturdy base to put our units into and also to screw our walls down into. It's a really good idea to do this because when you screw your walls down it means that you're screwing into the wood rather than directly into the metal. To do this all we did was measure the horizontal ribs and we left a gap for the main big bulge which was right here so that when the ply comes on it's not bulging out and instead it just lays flat along the whole wall. For each batten we drilled and countersunk three holes and then we held it up against the wall and used a small drill bit to just mark off where it was going to go and then we drilled the hole into the actual metal. After that we just put some blobs of Sikaflex on the back and screwed it in. It's important to place these battens in areas which you're going to use. So for example here, this is where two pieces of ply meet. And up here, this is where we know that the top of our counter is going to reach. So we're going to want to attach it to the wall here to stop it all moving forwards. that we vapor barriered all of the walls. We use something called reflect sticks for this and also some aluminium tape. My mum actually managed to get the reflect sticks off of FreeCycle so we definitely recommend checking FreeCycle or any other community pages for these kinds of things when you're doing your van build because you never know what you might find. <laughs> chose to use a full sheet of 1.2 by 2.4 meter ply going this way along the van. Why we chose to do this is because we wanted to make sure that we had a minimal amount of seams visible. This way we get to hide the connecting seams underneath the bed and underneath the cabinets. For the first sheet we just had to contour the line to the back of the van. It's not exactly heavy but it's quite an awkward shape so it took a few people to hold it up while we were doing this and after it was all cut out just the same again get a few people to hold it up while you screw it into the baton that you placed down earlier. <laughs> If we were to redo all of this, we would probably put a batten in the middle of this wall as well because as you can see, it's quite a large gap here. The middle part wasn't actually quite following the curve of the van. But what we did to combat this was we just added a little bits at the end on both sides, which helped to just pull it tighter and make it more round. Once the first piece is installed, it's a bit more easy to measure the remaining gaps. So the second part we had to do was put this vertical strip down here by the driver's seat. It was kind of easy but it kind of took a really long time because there's still loads of curves as you can see all around here and even the shape of where it meets the driver's seat area is curved again so yeah just imagine it's all going to take longer than you think but you'll get there in the end. Thank you. 
After that, it was time to tackle the wheel arches. We were quite lucky because when we bought the van, it already had some panels, so we were able to use those panels to make a template. But as we had discovered since doing this conversion, nothing is quite as simple as it seems. We had to repeatedly take it off, trim it back, take it off again, trim it back, and finally it fit. Once we had the fit for the wheel arch, we had to then bring down the top of it to match the other piece of the ply. we did exactly the same. We put a horizontal piece of ply going across here. Um, we actually found that there's a big bulge in the metal here which is where our cables are going through. So we put a hole for our cables to come through and we put a rubber grommet in here to protect the wires and we also chose to use Sikaflex to stick this down and clamps to really force it into shape because we just didn't want to break our vapour barrier. We also didn't want to cause any damage to any of the cables running through here. And that brings us to the end of the video, so join us next time where we'll be talking in detail about how we fitted our sliding and our back doors. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see what our van looks like when it's all done, please feel free to subscribe. We're going to have a whole van build series, so hopefully you'll find anything you need to know.